honest with themselves, this is all the sport bike they could actually use. This is a bike that's gonna teach you. It's, oh my God, this bike can teach you so much. Super easy to float the front wheel on these bad boys. You gotta love Yamaha bikes. You had to listen to the consumers. Oh man, Countach, dang. You don't see those every day. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is one of the most hotly anticipated motorcycles of 2021. And we have it here right in front of us. Today is a first ride and impression on the Yamaha YZF R7. Yes, we finally have one in the shop. You guys know the deal. This is a giveaway motorcycle. This is our new beginner bike giveaway. It is replacing our Triumph Trident we did. And uh, I am very, very, very excited to feature this motorcycle on the channel, to talk about it, to make videos about it, because I think there's there's so much to talk about. This bike is polarizing, this bike is loved, it's hated, it has had some of the most highest engagement of any type of content we've done in 2021. I remember when it was announced and released, I made a quick little video saying that I called it. That video got like 100,000 views in like two days. A lot of people are interested in this bike, mostly because people really loved the R6, they love the Yamaha R bikes, myself included. My very first motorcycle was a Yamaha R3 about six and a half years ago. And um, yeah, people love these things, man. They just uh, wanna see Yamaha do good things with them. Uh, but as I mentioned, giveaway motorcycle, hit the links down below to yamanoob.co, become a member over on our website. You can register for free, get access to a bunch of cool stuff and features we have on there. Live streams, behind the scenes content, member meetup or Discord server, and you'll get entered to win this bike and all of our other bikes too. So with that out of the way, Let's talk about this bike for a little bit before we go out on the road. If you guys want to go ahead and skip to me riding this bike and talking about it, there's a lot to say about it. Uh, go ahead and use the chapters feature down below and you can scrub through and see the parts you want to see. Right now I'm going to cover specifications on this bike. So this thing is the same frame and engine as a Yamaha MT-07. Features a 689cc parallel twin with a 270 degree crank, making about 75 horsepower and 50 foot-pounds of torque, which I think is a perfect number for a beginner bike, perfect number for a rider who wants to utilize every last horsepower, great power figures on this thing. Same swing arm from the uh, MT-07, so frame, swing arm, and engine basically all unchanged. Uh, where they did change things on this motorcycle over the MT-07 is the suspension. So this now features a fully adjustable 43 millimeter or 41 millimeter, I can't remember, I believe it's 43 millimeter, uh, KYB fork. So you got preload, rebound, and compression adjustments on your front end. And Yamaha also revised the rake a little bit. So this motorcycle is a little steeper than an MT-07, just a little bit, I think one or two degrees, but that makes a big difference. This features the new 2021 MT-07 brake setup, so the discs are a little bit bigger. Radially mounted too, as you can see there, which is nice. But the big thing here for me, as a Yamaha fitted a larger Brembo master cylinder on here. That's also radio pull as well. So that's really nice. That's a very good touch on a motorcycle that's designed to be more sporty and more aggressive for track duty and that kind of thing. Um, also, as you can tell here, Yamaha fitted clip-ons and this triple tree as opposed to the handlebars you get on the MT-07. One very cool thing Yamaha did here is uh, they actually allow you, if I'm looking at this correctly, you can unbolt this clip right here and then you can unbolt that right here and you can actually adjust your stock clip-ons right here. But the first thing that any track enthusiast would do on this motorcycle is uh, get a set of clip-ons on there and adjust it to their parameters and their liking. The other big change that Yamaha made on this motorcycle is including an adjustable shock at the rear. So if I'm looking at it correctly, I can't remember if the MT-07 is a linkage system like this. I'm not sure if it is, but this motorcycle features a linkage system, rear shock, has adjustability, uh, not only just preload, it has rebound and compression as well. Um, so this is a fully adjustable set of suspension on this motorcycle, which is a big feature over the MT-07. Uh, price for this bad boy is $89.99, which is really awesome. Massively undercutting something like the RS660. Massively undercutting its predecessor, the R6, which I'm going to talk about today. And I'm going to have some controversial opinions about it as well. And uh, of course, as you guys can tell, Yamaha fitted a very stylish set of fairings on this bad boy. But I believe they still utilize the same 
fairing stay. Well, there's not a fairing stay on the NT07, but th there's got to be a reason why Yamaha put this little bulb here, because I guarantee you the NT07 had some system they needed to keep this bulb here. But uh, as you can tell when you flip the key here, it's got the very distinctive R-Bike styling. I think this thing looks really good, man. I think this is a very handsome-looking motorcycle that you would be proud to own and ride. And with that being said, let's see how it rides, shall we? I'm very excited. Spoiler alert, I've really been riding it around, so I know how it rides, but I'm going to show you guys how it rides. Same MT-07 switch clusters here, so if you've ridden any Japanese motorcycle ever, uh, this is all going to feel very similar to you, very at home to you. Uh, the gauge here is the new inverted LCD display that the MT-07 uses. Gear position indicator, tachometer, fuel gauge, speed. That's all you need, baby. Let's fire it up, shall we? Now, I know what you guys are saying. Oh, yammy, I miss the R6's inline four sound. That sounds so bad. No, it doesn't. The CP2 sounds really cool. And uh, again, I think this makes a case for itself as a better street motorcycle than the R6. Let's hear how it sounds, shall we? That thumpy CP2. Now, when you swing a leg over the R7, uh, first thing you notice is, compared to an Ninja 650, way more aggressive. This feels like a real sport bike. Uh, pegs are up higher, seat is up higher, bars are down low, but the ergonomics package is about 80% as aggressive as an R6, I would say, which lends itself to be a much better street bike than R6. Uh, which again, I got a lot to say about this motorcycle, so without further ado, let's take her out for a ride, shall we? Oh yeah, and of course, because it's based on a uh, MT-07 platform motorcycle. Click it up here in a second gear, if we can find it. Super easy to float the front wheel on these bad boys. You gotta love Yamaha bikes. <laughs> what a fun little bike. Uh, man, there's so much to say about this bike, I don't even know where to start. Let's start talking about just how it feels going down the road, all the control inputs, and, uh, you know, trying to not compare it immediately to an RS660, to an R6. Let's, let's observe this motorcycle in a vacuum. So the first thing I like about it is the throttle feel. Very snappy, very engaging, very direct. Um, it has a little bit better throttle feel than the older MT-07s. The new MT-07s have a revised uh, ECU, I believe, that has helped a little bit with the throttle mapping. So this feels great. It doesn't feel artificial, it doesn't feel muted, and that's largely down to the fact that this motorcycle does not have any electronics whatsoever. Which, guys, on a 75 horsepower motorcycle, you really don't need electronics. It's kind of overkill to have TC, slide control, uh, adjustable, cornering ABS, all that good stuff on a bike that makes 75 horsepower. It's a little bit overkill. So love the throttle feel on this thing. The Brembo master cylinder on this bike is a massive upgrade as well. The, the braking feel over an MT-07 is just night and day as I'm behind this garbage truck here, this dump truck. Um, I'm just kind of testing the brakes here. The fuel through the lever is really good. Um, better than a $9,000 motorcycle should be, in my opinion. But Yamaha has specced a pretty nice master cylinder on this thing. We are going to get around this guy because I don't really want to be behind a dump truck my entire ride. The other thing I like about this bike is the gearing. Um, as opposed to a traditional super sport or a super bike, you know, I'm in fourth gear right now at about halfway through my revs, which only redlines at about 10,000 RPM, which is 5,000 less than when an R6 would. And I'm in fourth gear, and I've got good usable torque all through the rev range here. One of the best things about the CP2 engine is how usable that torque is. Uh, it's got a super linear power band, and for the everyday sport bike rider and the entry-level track day enthusiast, um, this is exactly what you want. This bike is gonna make so many waves, man. Uh, this feels like a kind of prepped SV650 for track duty with these adjustable front forks, the front end feel. Uh, Yamaha specs this motorcycle with Bridgestone S22 tires from the factory, which is a tire that I would usually upgrade from because in the past, Yamaha has usually had some weird Dunlop OEM rubber that uh, was just on there to make sure you had rubber on the bike when you left the dealership floor and you probably roasted them at about 500 miles and it was time to go change them out. Let's be completely honest. 
Uh, this motorcycle also features a slipper clutch as I come to, uh, you know, slowing my speeds down here and using that gearbox, grabbing a couple gears down. This bike features a slipper clutch, which is a really nice and useful and functional addition to this motorcycle. That's what I keep coming back to on this bike, is Yamaha has made a functional, purposeful, and interesting uh, leap forward in their middleweight sport bike. And I know so many people are going to decry this thing, that it is no replacement for the R6, and what a disservice Yamaha has done uh, making this into an R bike. But I got to tell you guys, uh, Yamaha knows what they're doing because you can't find these for sale damn near anywhere. I put a deposit down on this thing at my local dealership, Ride Now Austin, and they told me that uh, the other two bikes that got delivered were sold in 20 minutes. In 20 minutes of them putting it up on the website, somebody called and bought it up. Um, so Yamaha clearly knows what they're doing here and knows to uh, you know, market a motorcycle that people actually want to buy and they can't afford. That's a big thing in today's marketplace is getting a motorcycle that uh, you can actually buy, you know, brand new. Um, a lot of motorcycles now, like the RS660, for example, you know, you're talking 12, maybe $13,000 out the door for a bike for 100 horsepower or so, you know, not super tenable. But this thing, you know, you could probably get in for it for under $10,000 if you know how to negotiate at your dealership a little bit. But again, because, uh, you know, these are in such high demand, that might be a little tough. This sort of motorcycle makes so much more sense for the average everyday street rider. And I wish people were more honest with themselves, man. I wish people were a little bit more honest with what they actually want out of motorcycling and what they actually need because most people need this bike. Uh, I get a lot of comments on our Discord server of guys who want to go do track days and stuff and they're like, oh yeah, I daily ride a 1000. Uh, you know, I'm thinking of getting a 750 or a 600 for a track bike. Those are still massively overpowered for your skill set because people dramatically overestimate how much skill they actually have just because they've been riding for, you know, 10, 15 years or something. There was a quote that I saw from an article that Dylan Code, the, uh, one of the owners over at the California Superbike School wrote, and uh, this guy went and did the school and he said that he had 20 years of riding experience but in fact, he walked away saying that he actually had one year of riding experience repeated 20 times. And I think that's so accurate. And I think this motorcycle is a salve for that kind of uh, mentality, you know? This is a bike that's gonna teach you. It's, oh my God, this bike can teach you so much. Um, this is now, for me, after riding it around town and stuff, uh, my number one choice for people who wanna pick up a track bike to learn with and want something new and fun that they can still rock out on the weekends with and ride to work and do whatever with. Uh, man, this motorcycle knocked it out of the park. It undercut the RS660. It's better than any of the other middleweight fully fared options for so many reasons. It's not needlessly aggressive like an R6. I'm totally comfortable riding this bike around because the ergonomics package isn't anywhere near as punishing. And the front end feel on this thing is awesome. Uh, Yamaha has done such a great job um, getting this motorcycle dialed in and uh, getting that front end feel to, to, to do what an actual sport bike needs to do. I was really worried when I saw this motorcycle uh, revealed because I was like, oh no, Yamaha just literally stuck some plastics on an, R or, uh, an MT-07 and called it a day. But in fact, they have done some good, meaningful changes to this bike to make it really, really good. That slight change in rake at the front has made for a motorcycle that uh, feels a lot more agile. Having S22 tires from the factory, having a more V shape on that rubber at the front makes it so much better. And having that more sophisticated suspension at the front as well has done wonders for this motorcycle, wonders for this platform on the MT-07. And uh, mark my words, Yamaha's gonna sell every single one of these that they make. We'll get a little pull in here. Got a shift light, that's cool. If people were honest with themselves, this is all the sport bike they could actually use. Um, Anyone who thinks they are able to use an R6 on the street to even 20% of what it's capable of is just lying to themselves, man. You're completely lying to yourselves. And y'all should really ride this because 
this has more usable torque basically everywhere that you'd actually be in on the street than an R6. Um, it has 89 more cc's of displacement. It has two fewer cylinders. So any rev, anywhere, anytime, you've got grunt from the engine. Yeah, you don't have the massive screaming top end, but I don't miss it, honestly. I've ridden many R6s on the road. Uh, as you guys know, I've got a Daytona 675R race bike, and those bikes are designed for racetracks, you know? This is such a usable, good street motorcycle that I'm really kind of blown away with it. Um, really kind of blown away with how capable and agile this thing is and how, how fun it is to ride, too. This thing's a riot because um, you get to use all of it. And I guarantee you, if you put a pipe on this thing, much like the other MT-07s, because it has the same engine, you'll get that good bassy growl that the CP2 has. This motor is just so much fun and so awesome. And uh, come on, man, you put it in second gear here and get to float little wheelies whenever you want with this thing. How freaking sweet is that? <laughs> I bet it'll clutch up in third just like the MT-07 would, but I'm behind some traffic here and I don't really feel like uh, trying wheelies. <laughs> As you guys know, I'm not the best at wheelies. Um, but let's talk about the competitors a little bit. Uh, as you guys know, we did an RS660 as a giveaway bike earlier this year. Had about four months in the saddle with it. Probably put in about six or 700 miles on that motorcycle, took it to the track. Did a lot of street riding with it, a lot of comparison riding with it. And I think this motorcycle does a damn good job competing with it. Um, the RS660 has a very noticeable kink in its power band because it makes so much top end power uh, given its displacement and cylinder size. 100 horsepower out of a 660cc P-Twin is a lot of juice. That's what race spec MT-07s make in Moto America, right? Whereas uh, this thing only makes 75. And you gotta hand it to Yamaha too, an engine that's been made since 2013 that they know inside and out, that has never really seen any type of reliability issues. Uh, pretty sweet to have in your garage and to just know that nothing's ever gonna go wrong with it. Um, and it looks really cool too. This beautiful blue Yamaha paint here uh, is a really nice touch as well. But going back to the RS660, so it has that kink in the power band. So this thing fuels more linear. The ergonomics package is a little more aggressive here on the R7. And I don't think that those 25 extra horsepower would make a massive difference for an entry to intermediate and maybe even an expert level track day rider um, who's not a club racer uh, in terms of their lap times. And this thing feels every bit as good on the side of the tire as an RS660. Uh, it feels really, really nice. I'm definitely gonna take it out to the track and show you guys, you know, how it does and what it feels like and what you can expect out of it because that's where I think this thing's really gonna shine. But as a street sport motorcycle, uh, comparing it against the RS660, it's just about as good. Um, now, do I miss stuff like the up and down quick shifter, the TFT, the rider modes, all the fancy farkles and features, the cruise control that the uh, RS660 has? Not really, honestly. This is, this is an honest sport bike. It's got a slipper clutch, it's got a bigger master cylinder, it's got adjustable suspension, fully adjustable suspension, I might add, which the RS660 does not have. Uh, and this is just everything you need and nothing you don't. You know, the RS660 is everything you need and then some extra features and farkles thrown on top, which is why I said that the RS660 should have an SP model that has all that stuff and then a base model that doesn't. But I understand given the way that they build that motorcycle, they can't just throw a cable throttle on it. They'd have to completely redo everything. So I totally get it. Um, so that's kind of my RS660 versus R7 take. In terms of the R6, man, I already told you guys, I think this is a way better street bike than an R6. Makes so much more sense. It's cheaper, makes better torque, feels better to ride for a street setting, right? Of course the R6 would completely obliterate it on track. It makes 50 extra horsepower and is a super sport with an aluminum frame. Like, yeah, uh, yeah, it should do that, you know? Like my, my Daytona race bike would obliterate this R7 with me back to back on it. But for the average enthusiast, um, I don't, I don't think you guys should get an R6. I think you should get an R7. And a lot of you guys are probably gonna say that I'm being paid by Yamaha, but I literally bought this motorcycle with my own damn money to give it away. So I don't wanna hear that Yamaha is cutting me checks because Yamaha sure as hell are not cutting me checks because if they were, 
uh, I wouldn't say that it's a it's a miracle that they finally got rid of the pumpkin turn signals and this thing has real turn signals from the factory. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. Um, let's do this. Coming up right here, we've got a couple speed bumps. Let's check the uh, R7's kind of handling over bumpy terrain. This road also gets kind of bumpy down here too. Um, let's see this first one here. Yeah, it's a, it's a big four Japanese bike that will happily take, take you down those speed bumps. I'm not even slowing down. I'm going 37 over those speed bumps, lifting my butt off the saddle a little bit, which I'm able to do because, again, this ergonomics package is not that aggressive, which I really like. You don't need to be a gargoyle on the street. You don't need to ride every bike like the Fireblade, you know? Um, and I just I tell you guys, this thing's mighty capable. Uh, Y'all are sleeping on this bike if you think that it's not as capable or good as, uh, as an R6 around town. And it looks like an R6 too, that's the thing. Most people are not gonna know the damn difference uh, looking at this bike and an R6. They don't know the difference between looking at this and the Fireblade. They're just like, oh, sport bike, look at that. So I think y'all think a little too much about that sometimes. <laughs> um, what, I bet this, this motorcycle is just, what a knockout hit from Yamaha, man. I'm serious, like they're gonna undercut so many RS660 sales. Uh, let's talk about racing for a little bit, because actually that brings me to an interesting point. Um, although Yamaha will probably undercut Aprilia in sales in this kind of new middleweight twins class, just because this is so much cheaper and it's like 80% as good, 90% as good as the RS660. Um, the issue that Yamaha might face and, uh, you know, some of the promotional aspects of it is that RS660 is just going to continue dominating Twins Cup racing until people really figure out how to make reliable, meaningful power out of the uh, MT-07 platform. And I mean, the frame is just not as good as the RS is for racing. The RS has a twin spar aluminum frame. This is still using a tubular steel frame and it's just never gonna be quite as competitive as the RS660 in a racing environment. But again, for the average rider, average track day warrior, that really doesn't matter. Um, I like this look out of the cockpit, by the way. I know this triple tree and triple clamp is a little polarizing to people because they would like to see the actual cutouts like a, uh, you know, R1M or something like that. But come on, guys, they gave you plenty of the art bike styling on this thing. Look at that. I get to use my gearbox and the power is linear. How nice is that? <laughs> How nice is that? There's got to be something to be said about that. Y'all can't. Y'all can't really think you want to sit there at 15,000 RPM every day. Uh, sometimes you just want to get to where you're going and be able to use the power. And look at that, I'm able to, to get to where I need to go, pass this car with ease without dropping a gear, I might add. I'm in fifth gear still and I can pass that random SUV to get over here in the left lane. Got some little wind protection here from this bubble fairing and this uh, windscreen. Life is good on the R7, man. I, I think this bike makes so much sense um, and I <laughs> really, really like it. Uh, and yeah, y'all might think that I'm just a Yamaha simp because my, the, you know, the channel name is Yammy Noob and I started on an R3 and we did an R1 giveaway bike and I still dream and think about it all the time and I've got my WR250. I like Yamaha bikes, all right? They're good but I'm not the only person that likes Yamaha bikes. They're good for a reason. People like them for a reason. They are very high qual for what they are. And um, they feel really good to ride. Yamaha really, you know, takes care of uh, making their motorcycles feel good to ride, man. They this is such a cool thing to see in the marketplace where they almost didn't listen to the consumers because if they had listened to the consumers, oh man, Countach. Dang, you don't see those every day. A white Lamborghini Countach. I think that's from like the 80s. So that's super cool. Um, so if Yamaha had listened to their consumers, uh, and especially if they freaking read my comment section, they would have been like, oh, we need to make 130 horsepower uh, R6, or oh, we need to make an R9. Um, but no, Yamaha did a big brain move and actually listened and looked at consumer data of what people are actually buying and what they can afford and what makes sense for the marketplace. And they were like, oh, literally nobody's buying brand new R6s anymore. We gotta make a new middleweight uh, sport bike that fills that need. And that's exactly what they've done here. Exactly what they've done. And at first I was skeptical 
I will admit, I was like, man, they're just going to stick on fairings on an MT-07 and try to spoon feed it to us, but they made meaningful and good changes to this thing. So much so that it doesn't really feel like an MT-07 when you ride it around. The throttle fuel in the engine is exactly like an MT-07, but because of this ergonomics package, I really don't feel like I'm on an MT-07. And then this front end feel, this thing is so nimble and so agile and so darty compared to an MT-07 that uh, you, don't, you don't really feel like you're on an MT-07 at all when you're on this thing. They're very distinct. Um, and one video that we're gonna make that I'm very, very curious to make is uh, we're gonna make R7 versus Super Sport on track. Um, hopefully we can line it up to where we do R7 versus Super Sport road and track, but we'll, we'll see how that pans out. <laughs> um, this might not be possible. But I really want to show you guys that the R7 and these sorts of bikes are exactly what you need for that everyday kind of riding. So yeah, what else can we talk about on this motorcycle? Uh, I need to think here a little bit. Oh, I can talk about another competitor. Okay. I'll pick it up from here. The one competitor that I want to talk about as well that's like not even really worth mentioning is the Ninja 650. Oh my god, this, this thing is completely different from a Ninja 650. Uh, I understand that they're both fully fared, parallel twin, sport bike things, but ride, ride a Ninja 650 and then ride this and uh, you tell me if you think they're the same. Ergonomics package is completely different. The engine feels way stronger in this thing. Uh, the front end feel is way better. This is has a way better braking system and for not that much more money. I am not gonna pass this guy on the left lest this guy doesn't see me. All right, we're good to go. Some road tips for you there, guys. I'll never pass on the left like that. So yeah, the Ninja 650 just doesn't really even feel relevant to me when talking about these motorcycles. Um, I don't really think the Z650 or Ninja 650 platform motorcycles are relevant at all um, in the new age of middleweight nakeds and sport bikes. You look at stuff like the RS660, the R7, MT07, SV650, why the, the Ninja 650 and Z650 bikes are completely irrelevant in my opinion. Taking the R7 through a couple more little sweeping corners here. Oh, so, so enjoyable to ride, man. It really rewards you for getting it right. What a fun motorcycle. Ah, of course this BMW had to get in front of me. Of course. Fun's over. The cool thing about this bike too is because it's in a lower state of tune than something like the R6, you're going to see better fuel economy, you're going to see better road manners, it's not going to overheat on you as much. Um, this is probably going to be a much better daily rider than an R6, which is not a high bar to clear. Uh, I think I'd rather take a shopping cart as a daily rider than an R6, um, and that's really saying something. But uh, yeah, this motorcycle will work much better as a flexible everyday kind of motorcycle that you take out to the track every once in a while. And that's the big thing about it too, is Yamaha's optimized this for much more of a 50-50 split uh, for road and track use, as opposed to the 80-20 split that the R6 has for track and road use. Um, that's a motorcycle that's massively compromised on the street because it's so aggressive for the track. Whereas this is a much more sensible blend for a road and track bike. But people online think they need an R6, man. They think they need an R6. And that's what's gonna fill the hole in their heart. And it's not. The only thing that will fill a hole in your heart is uh, a uh, leader bike. Yep, that's the only thing. <laughs> I'm just kidding, guys. As I mentioned, you get to really work through the gearbox and the gearbox is very positive, very good feeling gearbox. I believe you can option a quick shifter onto this bike from Yamaha, which is a cool feature. Um, or that might be Triumph that I'm thinking of, but anyways, I'm sure you can fit a quick shifter onto this thing because I guarantee you a lot of the MT-07 race parts that people made and built will fit this thing no problem, which is pretty cool. We're actually going to test that by getting an exhaust for the R7 that's supposed to fit the MT-07 and just seeing if it fits because I'm almost positive it will just made up and fit with uh, maybe some very minor modification done to it. Uh, but the gearbox feels really, really good. Clutch feel is great. Brake feel is great. The throttle feel 
is direct and responsive and snappy as you would expect from a real motorcycle. Look at that. It's right there. That's awesome. I love that throttle feel on this thing. And uh, yeah, I think this motorcycle is a solid 9.5 out of 10 for what it's designed to be and designed to use. And uh, we're going to make a bunch of amazing videos on this thing. We're going to take it out to the track, compare it to all kinds of motorcycles, and hope you guys are going to be interested in that content. Remember, this is a giveaway motorcycle as well. So uh, make sure you sign up down below and get started and get entered to win this bad boy. And uh, we'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching. See you later. Keep watching Yami no. Uh.